Hey guys and welcome. Thanks for joining us on our channel today. Uh, today I want to speak a bit more about the Corona beepers that we've been, been busy making. Uh, a while back I made an Instagram post about what we did with the DWM1001. I got a lot of feedback about it and asking how to do it. I did write a blog on our website, but of course a video is much easier, yeah, easier to understand. So in this video I'm just going to run through it's going to be two parts. So in this video, we're going to run through the basics of it, what device I used, how I used it, um, what I changed on the device, and what code I used. And then later on, I'll make another video with more complexity. So in this video, just from a transceiver and a transmitter and receiver. And the next video is if you have 10 in a room, how will that work? So if you want to see that, please like and subscribe and you can follow us while learning this. Um, I also want to show you guys how to use it maybe in a different environment because you can go on Google now you'll see that every time you Google Corona device distance beeper you get the same device everyone's using the UWBD um, ultra wide band frequency so UWB and it's the DWM from DecaWave so everyone's using that uh, so if you guys want to build your own Corona devices that's the chip to use so let's have a look at it I've got about five boxes here so it comes in this nice packaging by DecaWave. So this is about, yeah, I think, $30, $39. It's quite expensive, but what you get is actually not that bad. It's got a similar feel to it than the ESP32, so same type of package. So there you can see it. QR code, everything's going to you. So this is a development board, as you can see on the front. Um, yeah, there's a kit for library evaluation equipment, uh, only operated by competent personnel. Uh, you can't shock yourself with this guy, so please don't stress too much. So it comes in these parts. So we've got our board, our USB cable. So each device gets a USB cable, which is quite cool. Uh, let's have a look. So there it is. So you can see the chip. So that is the DWM1001 chip. So it's actually enclosed. So inside there you'll have all the different ICs um, that makes up this device. It also has a solar motor in it, which is quite cool. So you can maybe activate it once you move. Uh, we got battery charging circuit as well, um, reset button, Bluetooth, so there's Bluetooth as well. And this is just the SMT mi uh, microcontroller so you can program it. So it gets programmed with the Sega IDE, uh, it's new for us as well, um, not Arduino based. So if you want to program this, it's going to be quite old school C, which is quite fun. Um, so yeah, let's get cracking. So, so the plan is now to give this uh, device an uh, LED. So it can indicate when you are close to another device. So I'm going to two devices. So in the code below, you'll see, or oh, you snip it, GitHub. Again, disclaimer, I did not write this code fully. So I'll show you the GitHub link that someone did already for the transceiver and receiver and just altered it to what you want. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put an LED on here. Make one, it's a transmitter, make one a receiver. And then we can see if we can make the light blink if you get too close. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you another application that can this be used um, unique quite unique um, so stay tuned let's get started That's that. So I've got the LED on the GPI opens. So this, what do you call it, box. So the header, two by five, I think. Yeah, this header is where all the all the GPI opens are that you can set. So you can make it high or low, set or reset. Um, so, but I'll put the schematic and documentation of this board also in the in the links below or the description, should I say? And then I just added the battery. So they've got this small battery 
uh, connector there but I've never had a battery with that connection yet it does come with it so it does come with a small one but I just don't have batteries all my batteries are these big ones so luckily they give you this connection so you can just hold it on and then plug in so if I plug this in ah, you can see the red light so there's a red light flashing just says on so it's not programmed so once you program it you will see these LEDs change so the one LED will be for charging your battery um, so it's full the other ones are RX and TX and the other lights need to show just some status LEDs there's only one LED that you can use for um, not debugging but program wise is available for programming so we'll use this LED for indication if we're getting close to something that is basically it so this is all we need for our current setup so we're going to make two of these so i've got another one here so maybe i'll give this a red LED. I don't know. so we're going to do the same so build it like this and now we're going to program it so we're going to program it with making one as a transmitter and one a receiver so what actually happens is one device will send a message to another other device so we'll send a message saying uh, please listen to me the other device will say okay i'll Caught that information, I send a message back saying I've received your message and the timestamp. So that's where the important part is. So the one will send a timestamp when it sends it, and then you'll receive a timestamp when it receives it. And that timestamp differences with the speed of light, you can calculate the distance. This is what makes this chip so accurate. So if you do Bluetooth and Wi-Fi RSSI, you're looking at accuracy of between you know, half a meter almost where this device can give accuracy up to 10 centimeters. That means a distance of 1.5 meters, you'll be accurate between 1.6 and 1.4, which is quite, that's quite cool. Um, so yeah, let's program it and play around with it. Then I'll show you guys what I got planned for this. Okay, great, we just programmed it. Um, so let's test it out. So what I did, like I explained, I've got one transmitter, one receiver. So the transmitter goes, sends a message with a timestamp the receiver gets that message, sends a message back saying I received it with a new timestamp and that difference of time with the speed of light calculation can give you the, dis the distance between the two um, devices. So I think I set this now at 1.1 meters, uh, but let's test it. So I've got my, the receiver's LED will always go on because yes, so I'm lying, I'm lying, I'm lying, transmitter. Because I'm going to transmit, I'm going to receive, then I can get distance. I cannot get a distance if I don't transmit and receive. Yes. Uh, so let's get tested. So as you can see here, I've got a measuring tape. Mine the dirty desk. And then I've got, so I think this is actually my receiver. And this is my transmitter. So when I move it, there we go, see it starts. So there's a spot where it starts permanent on, there we go. So if I move this one closer, there you can see that one goes on. So if I move it back, it's off and that's off. So that's the gist of it. So that's basically just the basis of it. As I said, uh, I'll have the code and the data sheets and everything down in the below. Um, if you guys want to know more about the more complex part of it, please like, follow, subscribe, and then we'll show you guys more complexity about this. So this is only a two-way system. So what happens if I've got 10 or 20 in a room? Um, then it's just a bunch of people making noises. I have to listen to all of them, I have to transmit to all of them, and that can be quite tricky. That's a bit different. So the code below is just a transmitter receiver um, not written by me i'll give credit to the person is below if github is for the win um, yes now let me show you what i actually want to use this for so what i'm going to try to do is make a squat depth uh, indicator so i've got this as you can see quality hardware um, packaging duct tape is your friend uh, because I'm an engineer, I don't have mobility, that's the reason, and that's the only reason. So I've got my cheating shoes on. And so the idea is, I'm going to have one 
a device on the floor, let's say next to my ankle, and then one on my hip. So when I break parallel, it will indicate the green light saying I broke parallel. So this is for all those people who don't squat below depth. Um, just never mind the technique that I'm going to show because I struggle to touch my hips and squat at the same time. Like I said, engineer mobility does not exist and I'm sticking to that. So that's the basic idea of it. Um, so I cheated a bit, so because of my length, I can program it to a certain distance. So if someone else had to do this, it wouldn't work because our length are different. So I think next one I'm gonna do is maybe put a button on it. So we calibrate it when you're standing full up and you push the button again when you squat it fully. So it will calibrate the distance for each person separately. That might be kind of fun. Um, I'm quite tired now. Uh, thanks guys. So if you guys like the way we're doing the video, so I'm trying to show the projects we're doing, how we do it in a different fun way. I'm trying to make it easy as possible. If you guys like it, please like, subscribe and follow us. Um, next is the LED coasters. We've got a lot of different projects coming up. So thanks for joining us. Have a good day.